Hey everybody, Chris Schaefer with Potsky Outdoors coming to you again from Northern New Mexico on the Hickoria Indian Reservation. We're today fishing Mundo Lake for some great rainbow trout. Mundo is one of the up and comers in Northern New Mexico. It's getting real popular because of the number of fish that it grows to large sizes in a hurry. We're gonna come out here and fish with Potsky Firebait and Potsky Balls of Fire Salmon Eggs and see how we do. Garlic salmon, typical uh, egg sinker, three foot leader, just that quick. There you go, nice rainbow caught on garlic salmon egg. It's our fire bait. Put it on about a three foot leader, sliding egg sinker, threw it out on the bottom, I don't know, maybe two minutes, and this thing was on. So, real nice sized trout. Going back in the water. Fire bait bite is just non-stop. So fishing fire bait off the bottom, we continue to get a lot of questions on how to rig it pro properly. So I'm gonna show you right here. Again, it's very simple. Half ounce sliding sinker. I like to use the half ounce uh, simply for castability and the fact that it sinks. It gets down to the bottom and will uh, stay put. Okay, put a protector bead above your knot, uh, above your barrel swivel. That's like a number seven. Usually use a seven or five uh, barrel swivel from my main line right to my leader, and I go with about a three foot leader. Now here's something kind of important. That's a real small treble hook. I go with a size 10 or 12. If you go any bigger than that, uh, you may find the, uh, the difficulty in getting it up off the bottom. So stick with a small treble hook. Use a treble because it holds the bait on a lot better. Just reach in there, so get a small amount of it. it kind of sticks to your fingers, that's okay, it comes right off. I'm gonna roll that into a small ball. Now, here's what I want to do. I'm going to push that right into that treble, bury it in there. Sometimes they're pretty light biters like we've experienced today. I'll go ahead and push that all the way through, try to get one, of, one or two of those barbs sticking out at the base of that. Just barely expose them a little bit. Form that ball around the hook, have those barbs on the bottom, and you're going to fish that. One thing you can do, to make sure you're fishing the right amount, is if I drop that in the water, and it floats my hook. I know I have a decent sized ball on there and the hook isn't too big. And when that sinker sits on the bottom of the lake, I know that that fire bait is gonna float that hook at least three feet off the bottom. And that's exactly what I wanna do. Fire bait does it again. Yeah, another typical size out here. I don't know, that one's pulling drag from you, isn't it? Yeah, he's pulling a little drag, but I saw him. He wasn't one of them big. Big fatties that we're after, but he's not bad. Another nice rainbow on fire bait. Again, doesn't matter what uh, which color I'm putting on, all different scents, some with garlic, some without, but uh, they're hitting pretty much everything. Today we're fishing on the Hickory or uh, Apache Indian Reservation. Mundo Lake, it's approximately 50 acres. We're sitting about 7,000 feet here, and we manage this lake predominantly for opportunity for anglers to catch and keep fish, catch and release fish, a very liberal bag limit. We also allow bait fishing here as long as it's not uh, minnows or minnow parts or pieces. But things like Potsky's fireballs or fire bait are fantastic. The lake is, is a small lake, easily accessible by a float tube or a pontoon boat. Some guys will bring a canoe or a john boat. But uh, shore angling, we set out multiple docks every year in the spring and we take them out in the fall before ice season. The lake's also open for ice fishing season. We're probably 90 miles from the nearest metropolitan area. Pagosa Springs to the north, about 45 minutes, is a small mountain community. Albuquerque, New Mexico, three hours to the south. We're kind of a central hub of nowhere. 
Uh, when you want to come fishing, you're definitely not going to see a huge amount of anglers on our lakes. A very busy day would be 20 people. And like I said, they can spread out in the boats and on shore. We do provide a very rustic opportunity here to go fishing in an area that not too many people get to access, this being an Indian reservation. A lot of out-of-towners are, are fearful to come here and to, you know, what, what's it like? I've never been to an Indian reservation. The community here is very friendly. The fishing opportunities are fantastic. We're known for our trophy hunting, but the fishing here has been fantastic since the 70s uh, when they really started to put a huge effort into maintaining the recreational fishing lakes. Nice fish. That's a nice fish. You know what I've noticed is these fish are then the, we've been catching here. They're different, completely different strain. They really yeah. are. The ones yesterday we caught were straight silver. That's a football. Yeah, that thing is a Very nice. Wow. Look at that chunkoid on there. Look at that thing. Okay. Hey Jacob, so we just caught a really nice rainbow. We've caught a few of these today. I mean, th these things are healthy, <laughs> extremely fat, well fed. Uh, you guys stock these in here, but what size are these fish when you put them in? So a lot of, most of the fish that we stock are in between six and nine inches. Some of them be up to 11. Obviously when you, when you buy trout, they say they're nine inches, but there's a, a good uh, spectrum. We can grow trout in here in the prime growing season, which is going on right now, about two inches a month, maybe right. an inch and a half. They obviously grow extremely fast. Very quickly. We stock a nine inch trout in, and, and if you stock in the spring, you catch it in the fall, you're gonna have a fish that looks That's like That's unbelievable. This. We fish areas where it takes literally years for fish to get this big, right. and or, you know, usually when I see a fish that's got a smaller head, bigger body, I, I'm thinking triploid, but you tell me these are not triploids. No, these are not triploid trout. When they come into a lake like this that they're not normally used to, these might be a river strain fish or a lake strain fish, right. you might catch this trout in the fall and it'll have eggs. Oh, okay. So they get really confused. Their timing's off. Their timing's yeah. off. So normally in a normal lake, that'll throw it off. They're putting a lot of energy towards uh, egg development and, right. and spawning activities. Even if it's unsuccessful, they go through the motions anyway. But here, since there's so much food, it doesn't matter. They can grow eggs, they can grow fat, they can they can grow legs. And they just grow. They just keep growing. They can grow legs. Yep, Perfect. it doesn't even matter. <laughs> they do everything here. Yeah. We like that. We stock multiple times a year all of our lakes with cold water species, uh, most predominantly rainbow trout. We stock fish anywhere between six inches and, and 10 pounds. We stock approximately, I would say 45,000 fish into Mundo Lake a year. And like I said, it's only 50 acres, so it's a very high uh, density of trout. All the other fish species uh, naturally reproduce in the lake and we don't have to stock those regularly. Oh, oh, he's is there? On? Oh, he's there. This fire bait. <clears throat> Which one is that, the fire bait? This one here feels a little smaller. No, I mean, what, what color was it this time? Uh, it's the uh, salmon garlic. They can't all be five pounders. They can't all be five pounders. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't take long when they're on the bite here. I was just trying to get the other rod rigged up. So what we're doing today is we got several techniques going. What I'm doing with my rod is basically drifting salmon eggs and using a slip bobber to keep them well below the surface. So we don't want them on the bottom. Obviously, remember, salmon eggs do sink. However, we don't want them real up close to the top either. So what we're doing is we have a slip bobber system here and we're using the slip bobber to keep it about anywhere from four to seven feet throughout the day off the bottom. And uh, we're switching it up throughout the day, you know, using a little bit of silver label, using a little bit of yellow jackets, a little bit of gold label, and orange deluxe. Lately, what I've been doing is adding a little bit of variety. So I'm gonna take a, uh, a silver label, put the silver label on there, and I'm gonna put two silver labels, just so you puncture the first one and you can get a little bit of uh, balls of fire egg juice on it. Then I'm gonna put the second one and hope to keep that one whole. And then what I do is we're tipping them all with fire corn. So I'm taking a piece of the fire corn, putting it on the very end like this. And what that does is if you lose your salmon egg, which you're gonna lose a lot because they're hitting it a lot out here. A lot of times the fire corn is a little bit tougher, more durable. It's gonna stay on the hook so it keeps you fishing the whole time. Just hammered it. I don't think he's huge, but he hammered it. Ah. All right. This might be a little bigger. Might be the same size. 
Yeah. Doesn't matter. I saw its tail come out of the water. Yeah. Maybe it's another bluegill. I don't think so. I think it's a rainbow. It really well, the bluegill hit the fire bait last time. Oh, he's decent size. Look at that guy. Doesn't seem to matter what flavor or color of fire bait we put out there. They just, within about, I'd say the most, four or five minutes. Any trout that takes drag and it's set pretty tight is a good trout. Oh yeah. Gosh. Look at the girth on these things. These are healthy, healthy rainbow. And uh, as Jacob was telling us earlier, probably a second year fish. They just grow extremely fast. There's so much good feed in this lake. They're all like footballs. They are. I don't know what uh, what they eat every day on a regular basis, but they're definitely eating the fire bait today. Yep. Huh? Hammering those eggs. I don't think he's as big as the one you got, but maybe he is. Sorry. It's taking pretty good drag. <laughs> Tell you what, these hickory trout sure fight way better than the ones we've been catching. Hey, that sounds pretty good there, dude. Woo! It's been a long time since we've been to a planted lake and had trout pull drag like this. What a fish. Wow, that's a good one, Dwayne. Yeah, it's a real that's good one. That's a good one. When he splashed in the water, I knew he was good size. Yes, sir. That's a dandy. That's a couple pounds. See what happens when you guys let me fish? <laughs> yeah, who uh, who actually set that all up for you? Ooh, yes, sir. Here, give me that net. Yes. Don't screw it up, Shay. Come on. Come on. Joe, mama, there it is. Oh, there he there is. is. Yeah, on. buddy. Woo. Oh yeah, oh, buddy. Yeah. Come on. Come on. You take my rod. Oh, bam! Oh, bam! <laughs> Welcome to the Hickoria! <laughs> That's a good one. Yes, sir! Come on. Woo! Look at that big boy. Silver label. Right under a bobber. Almost too easy. <laughs>